everybody, my name is Emma, this is Emma Rosen Books, and today I am going to tell you about all the books that I read in August. So I only read four books this month. Um, I'm going to do a life update video probably the week after next, but um, in a nutshell, <laughs> I've been, I've had quite a lot of work things that I've needed to do. I've also been working on a draft of a new book, which I'll be talking about soon enough. Um, as hopefully you saw, I launched a hardback version of my children's book, Lily the Limpet Gets Lost. Um, also, I've had the kids, I mean, they've been at home for months, but because um, during homeschool, sometimes, depending on what they were doing, I could work um, while they were um, while they were doing their homeschool over the holidays, I've kind of got to entertain them. So basically, because I've been juggling a lot, I haven't had time to read as much as usual. But anyway, so I will um, go through these one by one. Now, the first two books that I read this month, which were Wilding and Salt on Your Tongue, I uh, treated myself. <laughs> um, I talked recently about the fact that I don't buy books and that I have a tendency to just read like anything and don't curate what I'm reading so um, I treated myself to some books I've wanted to read for a while so the first one of those was Wilding by Isabella Tree this came out relatively recently 2018 um, and I heard Isabella Tree talking on Desert Island Discs that's how I heard about it I wasn't aware of her before that um, I love this book now basically Isabella Tree is married to a guy whose name I can't remember, Charlie somebody, I want to say Burrell, but I think I might be completely making that up, um, I don't know, I'll write it underneath, um, but anyway, um, he owns a, an estate called Nep Estate. <laughs> Um, and but it's a farm and basically they started out with it as a working farm and she goes into all of the details of why the farm was unproductive and why financially it was a challenge and things of like the um um the overproduction of food and all sorts of things to explain why the estate just wasn't productive and why they then made a decision to wild the estate. So they didn't just, what I thought was that they literally just hands off, let it do what it's going to do, but they didn't. And the way that they managed the land was quite groundbreaking. They, they believe basically in having big areas that are grazed, so basically so it doesn't end up as a woodland. Um, the, they, they believed that you would always have grazing animals that would kind of give you big clearings. and So anyway, the, she goes through in this book what they did, how they did it, and the results in terms of the wildlife that they've seen moving back into the land. And it's so good. I mean, it made me a little bit obsessed with oak trees and turtle doves. Um, I kind of want to get some bison it's what is she having this? It's to replace aurochs. I can't remember, but cattle. Let's get some cattle. <laughs> I don't think I can have cattle in my garden. Um, but it's just fascinating and it made me feel really passionate about going back to nature, treating land as it should be. It's just such an interesting approach. So if you're interested in wildlife and um, environmentalism, cons um, conservation, I just think that the angle that's been used by these guys in this project is so interesting. Um, it's very scientific, but really, um, uh, really accessible. So yeah, really enjoyed this and I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend. Then I read Salt on Your Tongue, which is a book that I ran into <laughs> when it had just come out and I saw it at uh, the Margate Bookshop, which is a lovely independent bookshop if you are in the Margate area. They stock my books. Um, and I saw this just out and was like, ooh, um, and didn't pick it up on that day, but have bought it since. Um, like I said, I just don't buy books, but then I decided to now. Anyway, um, so Salt on Your Tongue by Charlotte Runcie. 
kind of wasn't what I expected. I thought that this was going to be a collection of short stories. Um, I think I just kind of misunderstood, but it was even better. Um, essentially, it's autobiographical. So Charlotte Runcie uh, falls pregnant quite early, it's not a spoiler, <laughs> quite near the beginning of the book. And she sort of talks about various trips to the sea, things to do with her pregnancy, but then that's all woven in with lots of tales of the sea. So those are um, myths and folk tales and stories of like cultural things and some of them are about Scotland, some of them are like woven into Greek myths, some of them are personal stories. So it kind of is short stories, it's like lots of cultural ocean oceanographic tales and it's beautifully written there was tons in here I didn't know I mean my knowledge about the sea is more about the creatures that swim in it rather than this like cultural thing and a lot of it was like Scottish and it was just gorgeous it was like yeah lovely if you love all that kind of mythical folklore stuff um, and especially since this is then woven into um, a pregnancy and as you all know as well, that's right up my street. It was like the sea and pregnancy and birth and women. And most of the stories center around womanhood, not all of them, but there's a real kind of core of um, stories about women and the sea. Particular things I found interesting in here, it talked about how often men's relationship with the sea historically would be going out on boats, whereas women are more tied to the shore. And I found that just interesting in the kind of stories in here. Um, also, I love that it mentioned the uh, Shell Grotto in Margate because I love the Shell Grotto. And yeah, I got that bit, I was like, ah, <laughs> I mentioned it. Again, another recommendation, if you're ever in Margate, head to the Shell Grotto, it's very nice. But uh, yeah, it's just, um, I really, really enjoyed it. Very beautiful, very interesting. Um, I now want to make sure that my shoes are buried by the sea so the sea won't come and claim me when I am buried. It's lovely. So yeah, um, Salt on Your Tongue, Women in the Sea, another amazing book that I really enjoyed. Then I have my Kindle here. I will stick the picture thing. Um, but I then read an arc um, of a book called Heifer. It's a short story and it's by Helen. I'm not gonna be able to say her name properly, Rig Pedersen, but I don't know, I'll write it because I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Um, so Helen contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in an arc of her short story, um, and I said yes. And that, so. so Heifer is essentially a commentary on the dairy industry. The concept is that it's a dairy farm, but that instead of cows, they're women. So um, the milk is coming from from humans, so it humanizes everything that happens. Now, the, the farm in Heifer is like the worst dairy farm with all the worst things happening to sort of shock you. But, you know, these things, there will be elements of this story within probably a lot of dairy farms, so little parts of it. So, you know, in shocking you, obviously it raises awareness. Um, a real trigger warning in here for um, there's miscarriage, there's rape, there's all sorts of assaults, you know, there's lots of <laughs> unpleasantness. Um, but it's very, very well written. Um, it's it's, it's thought-provoking, obviously, by kind of turning things around. That's always an interesting way to do things. Personally, as you know, I'm really interested in breastfeeding, so that held interest for me. I think if you are interested in animal welfare, if you're interested in veganism, um, that kind of activism around that, I think you'll be very interested in this, in the angle this takes. Obviously it's taking an extreme example, but I mean that doesn't mean to say that that doesn't happen, but um, in terms of the things that happen to the, um, the milker, the main character in this, but um, yeah, I, I thought it was very, very good. It's a short story, it's quickly readable, it's one of the better short stories that I've read because I'm not a big short story fan and I like this, so that's like that's like a huge, um, um, what's the word? 
a positive thing endorsement I guess um for me because I'm I'm not a huge fan of short stories I don't often come across at any that I, I really really enjoy so I thought this was good um it did make me look up some stuff about the dairy industry I personally already so use a lot of milk I do I do drink milk but not don't drink it <laughs> I, I will as a preference use oat milk a lot of the time I tend to use actual cow's milk for baking um but yeah you know just uh interesting if that's what floats your boat so I thought that was a good book too very well written and thank you so much Helen for sending me the arc then final book this month was To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee this was one of the books that my friend Laura found by the side of the road. I'm going to, I think, add a hashtag to my Instagram of books Laura makes me read. Often they are books that she can't be bothered to read <laughs> or didn't get on with and she asked me to read them and tell her what they're about. She has read To Kill a Mockingbird, um, but I've never read this, so um, I really appreciated actually kind of being made to read it. Um, I, this wasn't one I did at school, I studied Of Mice and Men and Oliver Twist, so yeah. I know a lot of people, this is like one of those texts that, that gets read. Um, I didn't really even know anything about it. I, again, really love this. I've had a great reading month. So if you don't know, To Kill a Mockingbird is a story about a character called Scout, who's a young girl. Um, her and her brother, um, and her father, who's called Atticus. Atticus is a lawyer, um, and he is, uh, her, the, the mother's died, and he is like a middle-aged lawyer. I don't know. So then he gets asked to take on a case for um, a black man who is accused of raping a white woman. And what you see is Atticus through the eyes of Scout, so her perception of him, but also the other members of the community, the way people act, everything surrounding this case. So, so obviously there's a lot of commentary on race. There's also a lot about kind of social rankings and social perceptions, um, and also about women uh, and about, you know, she keeps being encouraged to be like a lady. And uh, there's just a lot of, it's a lot about society. Um, it's set in the thirties. And so it's kind of a real, I felt it was just a snapshot of kind of depression, South America. Um, the characterization in it is glorious. All of the characters are just, you know, perfect like they're not perfect they're not you know they're not perfect people but I just mean they are beautifully characterized so you can really visualize them and um the the way that Scout sees things is just beautifully done and obviously in the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that's happened the I think that made it even more poignant the the racism um things in here the things that happen it's the plot really twists as well I just yeah I loved it I haven't read it before I really enjoyed it if you haven't read To Kill a Mockingbird I really would recommend it it's gorgeous loved it so all in all four fabulous books I would recommend all four of them I'll put the links below um I have book depository affiliate links so if you want to you can buy them through there if you were thinking of it but you don't have to um, but it can still link you through to the information about these books if you want to find out more. So yeah, that's everything that I have read this month. I'm currently reading one of the Twilight books as well as um, Dear NHS. So next month I'll be reviewing everything I've read in September. My God. <laughs> Time does fly. Um, so, so yeah, please do let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and what you thought about them. Um, hit like if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this one. Take care.